In this video, we're going to show you how to install 8mm twin wall polycarbonate shin walls as a part of your baseboard system on a high tunnel, greenhouse, or a hoop house. There are many different methods for installing shin walls, but we're going to cover one of those methods here in this video. Here's an example of a greenhouse with the type of shin wall we'll be showing you how to install in this video. And of course, if you like the way this looks on this greenhouse, we do manufacture and sell greenhouses, and I'll link to where you can get a quote for one in the description below. Baseboards on their own don't usually come off the ground more than 4 to 10 inches, but adding shin walls to a structure can create additional height for the baseboards, which can provide additional insulation, protect the youngest of plants when the roll-up sides are up, and if you're a glutton for punishment, you could even trench out the full length of the structure and submerge some of the shin wall into the ground in order to keep out pests. For this video, we're not trenching anything out, but all the steps here we show in this video would still remain the same, so let's get into the tutorial. The materials needed to install a shin wall like the one shown in this video are metal baseboards, 8mm twin wall polycarbonate, single H channel, plastic double H channel, splice plates, Phillips drive, one and a half inch long pan head screws, 5 16th inch drive by 1.5 inch long tech screws, square drive by 3 quarter inch long pan head screws, neoprene washers, metal duct tape, and easy snap hooks with bolts and lock nuts. As always, I'll have direct links to where you can find all these materials in the description below. So let's take a look at the tools needed before we jump right in. You'll need a drill driver, a reciprocating saw with a metal blade, an impact driver, a tape measure, a 5 16th inch hex head driver bit, a number 2 square head driver bit, a number 2 Phillips driver bit, a pair of clamps, 1 quarter inch drill bit, a 1 inch hole saw, a 7 16th inch extended length socket, and a crescent wrench. To start, we're going to decide what polycarbonate panels we're going to use. Our ground post anchors are spaced 4 feet apart from each other, and we want to end each piece at a post. So we're going to use 12 foot long polycarbonate panels for our job. Next, we're going to determine how high we want our shin walls to actually be. In our case, we're going to make ours 24 inches high. And since polycarbonate panels come standard in 48 inch widths, we can simply do a rip cut through the full length of our polycarbonate panels to make sure we get all of our pieces. We're then going to remove the protective coating from both sides of the panel, being sure to mark which side faces out, and then we're going to apply the metal duct tape to each of the polycarbonate panel's ends. It's important to use this metal duct tape because it's going to seal the polycarbonate from moisture and also will prevent insects from getting inside of the panel. Since metal duct tape is kind of wide, I like to cut it in half lengthwise first so it's a little easier to hide. And I'm going to do this with every single piece of polycarbonate we're going to use as our shin wall. It's very important to put this metal duct tape on. Next, I'm going to clamp the polycarbonate to the side of my structure so that its top edge contacts each of the bows in the same point on every single bow. In our case, we're going to use a spot 6 inches above the top of the ground post. How you position your panels will vary by the type of structure you have, but the point of this is to get a consistent frame of reference so the polycarbonate panels are installed in a straight line from end to end. We're then going to clamp the polycarbonate to the exterior of our structure so its ends hit the very middle of a ground post. This means when your polycarbonate is clamped to the structure, you should be able to see a little bit of the ground post behind it. To get the polycarbonate loosely pinned in, we're now going to rough in where our metal baseboard will eventually be installed, mark where a screw can be driven so it wouldn't interfere with the metal baseboard, and then we're going to drive a Phillips drive 1.5 inch long tech screw through the neoprene washer and then through the polycarbonate and into the ground post behind it. We can rough in our metal baseboard one more time just to make sure it won't hit the screw, and it doesn't. Now we can measure up that same distance from the ground and drive a 1.5 inch long tech screw with a neoprene washer through the polycarbonate carbonate into the other ground post behind it. I do not screw anything into the end of this panel yet. We'll get to that in just a minute. Next, I'm going to clamp my metal baseboard back onto the structure. The metal baseboard should also be installed straight from one end of the structure to the other. You can base its location off your polycarbonate panel if you want, as an example, by making sure the metal baseboard is the same distance down from the top edge of your polycarbonate the full length of the structure. Next, I'm going to drive one Phillips drive 1.5 inch long self-tapping pan head tech screw, and it's important to note that it is a pan head tech screw, and I'm going to screw through the top lip of our metal baseboard, through the 8mm twin wall polycarbonate, and into the ground post behind it. Some of these screws may be difficult to install through multiple layers of material. One thing I find that helps is a 1 8 inch drill bit if you wanted to pre-drill some of the holes. I'm going to repeat this on the bottom lip of the metal baseboard with a 5 16 inch hex head drive by 1.5 inch long tech screw. Greenhouse plastic will never come in contact with the bottom lip of this metal baseboard, and for that reason it's okay to use a hex head screw. You're going to repeat this wherever the metal baseboard 
board makes contact with the ground post, except on its end, where it will ultimately be continued by another piece. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, on the prototype I'm working on here, in order to prevent it from just moving around in the wind a ton, I decided to batten down the beginning end of our polycarbonate panel with whatever finishing channel we're going to be using over our end bow. For example, in the case of 8mm twin wall polycarbonate, you would use end cap channel. And in our case, since most structures are being installed with 6mm greenhouse plastic, we're going to use regular single aluminum spring wire channel. We're going to secure this just like we otherwise would by attaching it with self-tapping tech screws to the end bow. But in this situation, it's going to double its purposes by also holding down the end of our polycarbonate shin wall. Note and remember, if you have polycarbonate end walls on your structure, you should install your end wall panels up to the point where they need their end cap channel. And you should do this before you install your shin wall up to this point. That way you can batten down your shin wall and install your end cap channel at the same time. For us, we're using single aluminum channel, as I just said, and we're going to install it from right above the baseboard, over top the end of our polycarbonate panel, and into the frame behind it. We're using 5 16th inch hex head drive by one and a half inch long self-tapping tech screws wherever the channel runs over top the polycarbonate. This acts as a batten for the shin wall, but will also be how we attach our end wall plastic in the future. Before proceeding, and at this point, if you plan on having corner wind panels as a part of your structure, you can add an additional piece of single aluminum spring wire channel between the bottom of your double aluminum channel hip rail down to the top of your metal baseboard. This would add a second piece of aluminum channel over top the polycarbonate shin wall on the very next bow in. This adds a batten and you would want to do this before you put your single H channel on, which we're going to show you in this next step. After we install our channel, we're going to rough in our single H channel at the panel's top. If you are going to be doing the corner wind panels and you have a second piece of channel on your second bow, it's pretty straightforward. You'll have to cut this single H channel before you rough it in. It'll have to go between your first and second bow, and then from the second bow on. When we rough the single H channel in place, we can go to its very end, where it will ultimately meet another piece of polycarbonate. This will allow us to measure the space between the top of the metal baseboard and the bottom of the single H channel. I'm going to cut a piece of plastic double H channel to this size, and I'm going to actually cut it 1 8 inch shorter than I measured so that there is a little flexibility. I'm then going to position my next polycarbonate panel, leaving a small space between it and the previous panel, making sure this panel's top lines up with the top of the one we just installed so it follows a straight line through the length of the structure and then I'm going to begin pushing the plastic double H channel on from their tops. This is the easiest way in my opinion to get the plastic double H channel where it belongs and make sure it is seated all the way to the metal baseboard as I'm showing you here. Before I permanently attach the plastic double H channel I'm going to start to attach the next polycarbonate piece just like the first by measuring my set distance up from the ground making a mark and drilling a Phillips drive one and a half inch long pan head tech screw with the neoprene washer through the polycarbonate panel and into the ground post behind it. Now I can finally attach the materials where they all meet. I'm going to start with the metal baseboard where the units overlap and I'm going to slide the second piece of metal baseboard behind the first. Then I'm going to use a Phillips drive 1.5 inch long self tapping tech screw to attach the two pieces of metal baseboard together before ultimately driving the screw through the polycarbonate and into the ground post. And on its bottom most lip I'm going to repeat the process using a 5 16th inch drive by one and a half inch long hex head self-tapping tech screw. Once the metal baseboard is in, I'm going to permanently attach the plastic H channel with two evenly spaced Phillips drive 1.5 inch long pan head self-tapping tech screws. We're going to go through the neoprene washers before we ultimately drive it through the polycarbonate panel and into the ground posts. We're then going to repeat this process at each point the polycarbonate is contacting the frame using two Phillips drive by one and a half inch long self-tapping pan head tech screws going through neoprene washers. Now we only run roughed in our aluminum single H channel that's on the top of our polycarbonate panels. So let's take a closer look and permanently attach the first piece of this single H channel and splice it to the next. We're going to push this single aluminum H channel as far over to the start as possible, making sure it's seated flat on the top of the 8mm twin wall polycarbonate. And then we're going to drive one square drive by 3 quarter inch long pan head tech screw through its top lip and into the frame behind it. We're going to repeat this wherever the lip makes contact with the bow, except where it's going to connect to another piece of single H channel. Where the pieces of single H channel meet, we're going to use an aluminum splice plate to connect them together. We have already screwed down the plastic double H channel, so we're going to put pressure on its top from the interior so we can squeeze a splice plate behind it. Note that I'm pushing the splice plate all the way down so its top is level with the top of the single H channel and not protruding above it. Then we're going to use two square drive by three quarter inch long pan head self tapping tech screws to connect the single aluminum H channel to the splice plate behind it. And I didn't notice it until right now, but in the prototype, 
prototype that I built, I did not put a pan head screw through the single H channel lip and into the ground post where they're meeting. And in looking at it, I would recommend doing that just to make sure it ties the whole system together. To completely finish the aluminum single H channel piece, we're going to look back at where we started it. You can see its beginning isn't screwed to anything. And now this is probably fine since it's secured at other places, but I decide here that I'm going to go back and put an extra splice plate behind it for good measure. I've already screwed in our finishing channel, so I'm going to have to temporarily remove a screw or two here so it's loose enough to squeeze a splice plate behind it. I'm going to make sure that this splice plate falls behind the single aluminum spring wire channel that falls on our end bow, as well as behind the single H channel that's on top of our polycarbonate. I'm positioning this splice plate so its top is no higher than the top of our single H channel. I then clamp the lip of the single H channel to the splice plate, redrive the previously removed screws in our end bow finishing channel, and connect the lip of the aluminum single H channel to the splice plate behind it with two square drive pan head by three quarter inch long tech screws. Continue the steps shown in this video for attaching your shin wall and metal baseboard until you've reached the end of your structure, where you'll end the shin wall the same way you started it, with your finishing channel battening it down. Make sure to remember to gently fold down the edges of the finishing channel you're using on your end bows, and if you have corner wind panels on your second bow in, so that the channel at the bottom is smooth. That way when the roll up sides come off of your baseboard and up the side of your structure, they're not hitting a sharp bottom to those channel pieces. Now that your polycarbonate shin wall is in place, you might be wondering how you'd be able to bolt anti-billow rope hardware to your metal baseboard. Have no fear because I'm going to show you right now. You're going to follow the same steps shown in our anti-billow rope video, except with one major difference. We still use the easy snap hook as a guide for where we'll drill through our metal baseboards with a quarter inch drill bit, but on the interior of the structure, our polycarbonate panel is currently blocking access to where we were going to bolt the easy snap hook onto the metal baseboard. And for that reason, we're going to use the hole our one quarter inch drill bit just made through the polycarbonate on the structure's interior as a guide for a hole saw. We're going to use a one inch hole saw here. Once the one inch hole has been made, we'll be able to fit a lock nut in this hole to meet the bolt that goes through our easy snap hook on the exterior of the structure. Then once the lock nut is on the bolt, we can actually fit a 7 16th inch deep well socket through this hole that we made with the hole saw to tighten down the easy snap hook with a crescent wrench on the exterior of the structure. This can be repeated wherever easy snap hooks are being installed in the metal baseboard when you have a shin wall. Once your shin walls have been completely installed on both sides, if you're installing corner wind panels, that will be your next step before you install your top cover greenhouse plastic. Hopefully this video helped you understand one way you can install shin walls on a greenhouse high tunnel or hoop house and shed some light on ways to further insulate these structures. And speaking of insulation, we just published our video on installing two layers of inflated greenhouse plastic and I'll link to that video in the description. If you like videos on season extension and and season extension structures, consider subscribing to our channel. And thanks for watching.